Okay, we'll, we'll go down the line here. Um, how do you become a referee? <laughs> what kind of training did you do? Just be lucky enough to go to the same coffee shop the promoter and owner go to. <laughs> <laughs> now, what does a commissioner do? Uh, basically, I'm in charge of making sure matches uh, happen. And <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> it was uncalled for. Be professional. Sorry. Was that him or was that you? That was him. <laughs> Do you want to wrestle in Edmonton again? Sorry, sir. You're really good at stuff. I got it. It's a tip. Basically, kind of putting the matches together, making sure that they happen, and uh, keeping the fans happy because that's what I'm all about. And showing no favoritism whatsoever, no right? No favoritism whatsoever. So, uh, uh, it's the chic. so we'll go down to, to Kurt. Uh, what does a promoter do? No, but like tomorrow we're gonna go real cool in depth. So yeah, just, pretty, pretty much over, pretty over. much everything. Um, I work hand in hand with uh, with our commissioner. Um, again, we set up all the matches, uh, booking the talent, um, using social media, getting the word out, um, chasing all the fans, uh, getting them to buy tickets, and uh, trying to make sure that we produce a quality event that people will want to come back and continue to see. And for Netico, why a luchador? I was always very uh, interested in the mass wrestlers as a child, uh, and, and the cruiserweights in general. Um, they just really caught my eye really fast. Uh, a lot of them are very colorful uh, as a child, you know, and, and who isn't into cartoons and, and comic books as a kid. And uh, I, I just never grew out of that interest. So when I got the opportunity to step in the ring, uh, it was a very obvious choice for me that that was where I was going to go. And Gabriel, what are other crowds like, you know, compared to the Edmonton and Calgary scenes? You know, they're actually, uh, depending on where you go, they can be a lot different. Um, in, in, in Edmonton and Calgary, you get a variety of, of, of people who, there are fans that sometimes they read a lot of stuff on the internet, so they think they know what's going on, right? Um, and uh, so, but then at the same time, you also got the, the, the fans that don't do any of that. They're just they're there to, to, to believe in everything. Um, but then when you go somewhere else, like, um, uh, I'm going to go back to Winnipeg, um, let's say 10 years ago, you had all of them just, like the fans, they were, uh, they just wanted to see moves. They didn't care about the wrestling or anything like that. It was, they weren't, they weren't really fans per se. It was more like, I just want to see something cool. Um, but here I find, uh, for example, here in Empton, they're just so, so much better. They're, uh, um, they believe in it. They really support the people. They support the wrestlers. They believe in the characters. Um, it doesn't really get much better than there around here, especially not really like Calgary as well. Can I, I just want to add to that, because sure. as a general rule, I don't like people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it's true, though, like between fans in Edmonton and Calgary, the Edmonton fans are a lot better than the Calgary fans. Uh, it, it's it's true. Like, I'm not even trying to suck up. It, it's true. It's just they they enjoy the show more. Um, I think the Calgary fans sometimes they're almost. Granted, I haven't been there in a while, but from when I was there, you know, it's like they want to be a part of the show. And there's one thing to be a part of the show where if uh, you know I start yelling at him and we get into it like this, but as far as trying to interject yourself in more than that in terms of you know what you say and how you're saying it and and like uh, Gabriel was saying just because you read stuff on the internet doesn't mean you know everything and and Edmonton fans are just so much better so that's something one thing one thing nice I can say about Edmonton fans um, the show. definitely uh, you know the appeal of going to an indie show is it's interactive you get to interact with the guys it's a lot more intimate setting um, the guys feed off your energy and, and vice versa. So there's one thing to interact and there's another thing to like get interject and uh, chant things that don't need to be chanted or try to take over the show. You know, yeah, the, the show's in the ring, not not in the stands. But we all work together. Obviously, we can't have a show without you guys. And the more interactive you are and into it, the more they feed off it. So I've, I've been to shows, whether it's been... You know, some of ours that, you know, maybe had a lower attendance or, you know, other promotions. Um, when the crowd's just silent or not into it, it's really hard uh, to take that performance up sometimes to another level. So you, sometimes you match and mirror what you're getting and then that's what you're receiving in the ring. And that's never a good thing, obviously, for, for you guys that are paying to see wrestling.
You know, I, I guess a good way of thinking of it is, let's say a musician, he's performing in front of a whole group of people. If they're completely quiet, how much is he going to be into it? As opposed to if the entire crowd is just roaring, right? And I think that's a huge difference right there. Does anybody have any questions? No. Everyone has to ask one question where you don't want to vote. I know this guy here. He has lots of questions. He's on a secret government mission. That's all we're allowed to say. I'm not even kidding. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go down uh, the line here. Oh, oh I'll, I'll get your question. I'll, I'll run over to you. Oh, well. yeah. Look yeah. at him go. Yeah, he's got catches this year. Yeah. Run. What's your name? Uh, Danny. Where are you from? Born and raised in Alberta. You're a good man already. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, the last show I can recall being to was the one at Nate, where uh, uh, the most memorable uh, match was where you had like the four-way tag team. And uh, we unfortunately got to sit next to some idiot who just kept calling him Dirty Dick Durango, <laughs> if you recall that match. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> old, man, old man got his hat stolen. And that was that was this year at the anniversary show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun, except for sitting next to that idiot. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but anyway, um, so you guys have Cody Rhodes showing up at the November 26th promotion. You bet. And uh, recently, like, uh, a promotion over in England, WCB, uh, WC, what is it, WPCW, uh, got Alberto Del Rio. So with, I know with a lot of the bigger promotion, like the WWE, and uh, they're, they're starting to really cut through some people. Is there anyone you really want to scoop? Like, who's kind of like the big name you really want to take? Well, over? that's one that you just mentioned there. There's there's a lot of guys out there. The minute someone leaves WWE, they're all going to one agent, and that agent and I have worked together for years. He used to agent for TNA, so uh, I, I've been fortunate to have, we have a very good reputation with, um, right from the fans, like uh, guys like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, these guys would come here and perform for you guys. They would go back and tell the entire locker room, you got to go to this promotion in Canada. Like, the fans were just unreal. And not only like, did you show up in huge numbers um, and, and spend a lot of money on their merch, that was the one thing that they would always say, like, I ran out of merch. Like, this place is fantastic. Um, but we just, and again, not to my own horn, but, um, you know, in, the more professional you are dealing with, with the talent, and a lot of them have agents, you know, the the better off you're going to get referrals and stuff. So there's really anyone that's not in WWE, there's no one that we can't get, um, you know, unless they're under contract. You know, even Jay Lethal was not to appear for anyone other than Ring of Honor in North America. And I was able to convince them to not only let him come wrestle, but defend the ROH title for the first time in Western Canada, which was, you know, was a fantastic thing for the fans to see. And that, that helped make that... Uh, that night special and you know we also sit an attendance record of 803 people and that's all because of the fans and, and again so Jay he was already when am I coming back Nate already you guys drank so much alcohol and ate so much food they were asking me are you, you, you want to come back next month so I, that's a reflection on what we all do together like you guys really helped set a, um, a high standard um, and, and so yeah there's um, it, I don't want to ruin it for you, but we've been talking to some very big names and some very legendary people, and um, again, they keep hearing good things, so they're all willing to come. It just comes down to price, because I'm a stickler when it comes to trying to keep the tickets reasonably priced for you guys, so it's it's worth it. Um, and you guys support our guys all the time, but again, you know, there's costs associated with bringing in a, a big name, but yeah, there's quite a few people that have contacted us and that we're interested in, so... Um, you know, we're, we're ending the year on a great note with Cody Rhodes and uh, like next year Night of Champions returns back to Edmonton and we intend to make that again a big show and even with our anniversary show in March that's going to be another huge one so yeah I'll run over to you I'm sure that's, there's no need he's impeccably <laughs> dressed yeah. Yeah. Nice. looking good might as well stand up everybody else is standing up we'll uh, one other question. Uh, this, all, all this one, one standing yeah, up yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, hi. Uh, uh, this question is for Gabriel. Yes. Uh, Gabriel, can you speak about how you got started as a wrestler? Yes. And uh, uh, specifically for yourself, and then maybe a little more broadly in general, how you've seen other people start as wrestlers. And can you do it in your native tongue? 
<laughs> they won't understand me. Um, so when I first started, I started here, uh, there was a school here in Edmonton. Um, it was basically, you had to train, um, I was there for five days a week, about four hours a day. Um, like I said, seven days a week, and then my very first match. Um, and it was, it was grueling, but it was, it was, it was, it was um, you, you, you had, first you had to learn the fundamentals of wrestling and the psychology and everything. Um, it isn't, it was nothing about like, oh, you're gonna go, you're gonna learn pile drivers, you're gonna learn power bombs and everything, right? It, there's, there's a small things, right? It's actually the things that get the, the crowd into the matches, right? Because people can go out there and do a bunch of matches, like a bunch of moves, but really in the end it's like, you, it, it doesn't make a difference because it's, it's like, wow, that was a bunch of moves, but the match itself wasn't very good. And I'm sure we've all experienced matches like that. Um, so the school schools itself, like they they, 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 they they teach you the fundamentals, how to get people more into it, how to get how, how, how you draw people in to pay attention to the match. Like this is a really good match. Um, and then so after six months of, of intense training, had my first match in Winnipeg, Manitoba, outside in uh, it was a Canada Day festival, and uh, they said roughly around three thousand people were watching because it was open in uh, um, Osborne Village, which is a, that's what they have outside, and we were in the beer gardens, and yeah, it was incredible. My match was absolutely terrible, though. You know, like, you, know you don't start off to be being great. You to, you don't at all. Like it, like even even just getting good is a lot, a lot of effort, um, and it takes time and experience. Um, but yeah, it was a terrible match, but uh, absolutely incredible experience. People that were absolutely phenomenal, um, and then uh, yeah, since then the trains continued, um, and you never stop learning. Um, even even when there are seminars with with individuals, um, like people that come by, some, some like uh, when we bring in names, sometimes you know, they offer to do seminars and you pick their brain as much as you possibly can. Um, and then of course there's other opportunities you have. A few of us uh, went to uh, Harley Races camp. Everybody anybody knows who Harley Races. He's a very 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 well known uh, wrestler. Um, he uh, and, and uh, he has a camp uh, once a year in in uh, in, in Missouri. And um, I've gone there, a few of us have gone there, and they have scouts from the LOV watch, uh, looking there, you have guys from, from Japan that go there to watch the wrestlers. Um, there's one day where, they, where the Japanese take over and they basically kick the snot out of you, and it is very grueling, but you learn so much, it's amazing. And then other guys go, like uh, we had uh, Terry Funk there, we had uh, Big Van Vader there. Um, the list goes on of people that just says, just go there to, to help everybody who wants to learn. And now they kind of tackle on like seeing other people um, train. The way I look at it is, is someone training me, right? If they took the time in training me and helping me, I should be doing the exact same to everybody else who wants to learn, right? Um, they have the same amount of passion as I do, um, we all do. And you want to help them out as much as you can. You don't want to, you don't, you don't, you don't want to completely crush their dreams. And you know, like, like it's, it's, it's like, why this, this guy could be the next big thing. Why not help? Even if it's just one little bit of advice, why not help them out, right? And that, that, that's kind of my view on things. Someone trained me. I took the time to be actually doing something to them. By the way, Calgary's sucks anyway. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite moment? Oh, what a heel. <laughs> oh, I was here. I mean, it's true, but... Favorite moment, guys? Favorite moment? One of my favorite moments is, uh, was it a year or two ago when we brought the Iron Sheik in? Oh. And he, uh, he actually slapped our Sheik right in the face. <laughs> had some words for him. That was a great moment. Weren't you a tag team partner with the Sheik at the time? Yeah. Oh, you let, I was around. And you let that happen. Oh. Oh. I was standing next to him. What happened? Oh, did he hit him? She liked me, so I didn't have a problem. Um, you know what? I honestly, I have over the span of twenty years, I probably have too many memorable moments. I mean, being the greatest PWA champion in history—that's obviously a pretty memorable moment. <laughs> Wrestling in WWE, that was memorable. Wrestling in Japan was memorable. Mexico, Puerto Rico, England. Um, is that good for you, Robbie? Well, there's got to be more. Country, country, country. Country. Uh, yeah, what other fun guys have you been? But uh, <laughs> Russell Mars yet? <laughs> That's coming up. Nice. No, there's just right now for me. I just I can't. I would love to pick just one. She's going commando. Get it? I see what you did. Yeah. yeah his you humor, his humor is always this bad. Trust me. Um. Well, like, yeah. Same thing as Andy. I've been doing this for over twenty years. So, um, 
Um, I'd say one is getting to see my youngest son wrestle for the first time. Um, uh, as a, you know, he kind of grew up in the business and see him win his very first title. Actually, he pinned well the greatest PWA champion ever, you. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was that was a truly memorable moment. Um, and again, it's a bit of the wrestling business, you know, uh, kind of passing the torch in that. And uh, they had a fantastic feud. And just watching them, uh, him pass off knowledge um, to younger guys. And, and just, you know, we, we brought in a lot of guests. Um, and just, you know, Booker T went in our, our title. Um, nobody's seen that coming. You know, the crowd actually all paused for about three seconds before they realized, no, this was real. It just happened. And, you know, the ovation we had, um, you know, working with the with the Iron Sheik was, was pretty incredible. Um, yeah, it, so many to pick. Yeah. Uh, for me, a lot of my real big favorite moments involved uh, interaction with the fans. Uh, last year, Night Champions uh, here in Edmonton, I was part of the uh, Guaranteed Title Shot ladder match. And there was a point in that match where I set the ladder up in the middle of the ring and I climbed to the top and, and the crowd starts rumbling and, and when I get to the top I, I just took a second to look around and in that moment you know there's all of these other people in the match but everyone's looking at me and that was so, uh, so cool that was, you know, and I'm sure anybody here will tell you that the fan reaction is, is a big reason why we do this so for those two seconds uh, that was just the highlight of my life. Until I jumped off and just about killed myself. <laughs> <laughs> and for, for me, um, um, not nearly as many as Andy, but I do have just uh, a number of, uh, of, of extremely memorable, memorable times. Um, one of them will be actually my very first one. Is uh, um, my first day of training, uh, stepped in the ring, and they told me, they taught us how to. Had a, had a fall, right? And the very first time I did it, it freaking hurt. It was so painful because people don't realize how much that mat actually hurts when you land on it, right? Um, and pulling myself up and telling myself, this is what you want to do for the rest of your life. And, <laughs> and that was something that I'll never forget. It was extremely memorable to me because it was, it, was, it was like, what have you got yourself into? But yeah, that was one of the most memorable, memorable moments. Come on in. Yeah. That made me... Uh, seats was, uh, right up front. Oh yeah, we got a lot of seats. Don't be shy. There's like two right up here. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Everybody's watching you. Alistair, you should probably get that nice looking couple at the back to come sit up front because they're going to... They can't stand the whole time. Well, oh. All right. <laughs> 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 That's right. Well, Gabriel... Uh, did you talk about his first day of training? How about everybody else's first day? What was that like for you, for Nico and Andy? My first day of training was actually at a, a PWA, uh, what they called a mini camp, where basically you come in and have someone kick the living crap out of you for four hours. Uh, and I remember, uh, you know, similar to to him taking that first fall and just going, "Oh my God, I cannot believe people do this so often on, on you know, television, travel around the world and do this." And uh, I, uh, I knocked myself loopy probably the second fall I took. And uh, just remembering, you know, kind of going, oh man, I, can, I gotta get up, I have to get up. And uh, I was sore for probably, probably five or six days. Like I couldn't hardly move after that. But it was so worth it, you know. And, and once I kept on going, I realized I made the right decision. Um, I, my training is not as extensive as the three of them here, but I got. Uh, to train with Hercules Ayala, he had a school in St. Albert, and uh, so I, yeah, I learned a lot from him in the couple months that we went and did some bumping. I got to bump in the dungeon a couple times with some of the guys when we were in the Stampede, and that was that was pretty cool. Big difference in the the pain level because the dungeon really was just a floor with a little bit of mats on it, but uh, and I had no clue what I was doing, so um, that, that was it for me. I think I'll have to go similar. For me, it was uh, March 1996. Uh, my first experience in the ring was, the ring was actually set up inside of a barn in Somerset, Manitoba. And I got my butt kicked for, yeah, probably the first three or four hours. 
but I think it's, I'm, I'm sure you guys can speak to this too, it's, it's like you said, like, no matter what, if this is something that you, you know, you've been aspiring for, for as long as you can remember, it's almost like, okay, you know, no matter what you're going to do, I'm not going to show that I'm hurt, I'm not going to stay down, I'm going to get up, get up, get up, and that's, and that's, that's what, that's what it is, and that's what you do, I mean, I think it's just like anything else, whether it's hockey, football, baseball, anything like that, you know, it's, it's, that's what you aspire to do when you get knocked down, you know, you're going to get back up, because that's, that's what you want, and, and that's how it was, and, and the, uh, I mean, you know, I've never had the, um, pleasure of bumping in the dungeon, but this ring that was set up, I mean, it was almost like a boxing ring. I mean, you know, for those of you that don't know, like boxing rings, I mean, if you see the same thing like, like, a, like an MMA ring, like they're pretty stiff. So it's, you know, like, like that. Whereas, depending on the wrestling ring, you know, usually you got a bit of spring, a bit of give, but there's still like plywood and boards underneath. And this one, it was all boards, but there was very little give. So it was like any time you, you know, you try to take a fall, try to take a bump. It just reverberated through your whole body, but again, like especially when you're doing it for the first time, you don't care because you just want to show that you belong there. So that's kind of was for me. Yeah. Well, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you were drinking coffee. <laughs> that's only drink setup. Uh, I got a five-minute speech from Dirty Victor Durango. Kurt came around the corner. This is my very first show. I got a five-minute speech from Dirty Duke Durango. Then Kurt came around the corner and said, Pat, you're Irish, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, you're Patrick Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Go. <laughs> that was my dream. I'll, uh, I'll come to you second. Well, I'm sure you don't even have to stand up or even use a mic, but... Oh, okay. But uh, you call well, him you might loud? Well, uh, wow. so, you guys are here. You might as well use the mic and stand up. You know, everybody uh, I got a short leg. I can't Okay, see. okay, that's good. Uh, was there any um, moment of where there was a storyline or character that you found? Who are you asking? Oh. Any, oh, every one of you. Okay. Characters. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Was there a character or a storyline that you guys found so ridiculous or offensive that you refused to do it? No, I, I think uh, with PWA, uh, we try to be as family friendly as we can all the time. and. Uh, Try not to dip too far into that area where people are going to be uncomfortable. So, um, you know, uh, speaking for myself, uh, my, my character, I really, really like, uh, especially here in Edmonton, uh, where people are bringing their families out, and I get a lot of uh, moms and, and dads that like to come up to me and tell me, you know, hey, thanks for, for being uh, the character that you are, so I can bring my kids out and, and enjoy the show. Um, I guess for me, I had one that actually made me feel very uncomfortable. Uh, when I had to do it, but I still ended up doing it was um, after a match, I was told I had to crucify somebody. And, which is, yeah, but also very offensive to many. And um, I still went out and, and did it, but at the, the time, like, I remember, I'm like, I'm thinking of mine, I'm like, oh man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it, it's something like, um, uh, it, 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 it wasn't something that was that was good, but at the same time, my character was very dark and weird. And it wasn't for PW, because PW would never make me do that. Um, just want to make that clear. But uh, um, it was it was it was something that uh, that was yeah. I, I probably shouldn't have done it, but I, I did because I had to I had to show that my character was like the evil that my character had at the time, and that was one of the things that they asked me to do, and I did it just to prove the character. Um, well, being. Uh, one of the people that's always been on our booking committee um, and always worked on the storylines and everything, I get to approve or disapprove everything anyway, but there are some pretty terrible ideas that have been pitched to us over the years or someone new coming in very inexperienced, kind of worrying about doing some kind of angle or doing something that didn't make sense. So we said a, a no to a lot, of, a lot of things or a lot of dangerous things. There's people that wanted to do scaffold matches and um, just stuff that's too high a liability. Um, I'd say one of the worst things was when we brought Abdullah the Butcher in and he literally jabbed everyone and there was blood everywhere. I had to go in at the end of the show after we got him out of here and um, he couldn't, uh, he's just not as mobile as he once was. So we had to have him outside of the gym. We were at Nate uh, in a bathroom was his locker room because he couldn't go up and down the stairs to the locker room. Um, I went in there after he had driven away with one of our partners and it looked like a crime scene. There was blood 
everywhere. It was in the sinks, the mirrors, the walls. It literally looked like right out of uh, Friday the 13th. And we had to clean that up. So, uh, yeah, we said, yeah, that, that'll never happen again. <laughs> and did you go get tested after? Everyone got tested after. <laughs> and I wore gloves. <laughs> I don't know that I've, from like my time in the ring, I don't think I've ever had anything come up where it was so ridiculous or stupid that you know, I'd have to say no. I mean, that's just where I've been fortunate for the companies that I've worked with and the people that I've worked with, that I've never been put in that type of situation. Um, on the other end of things, I guess I could, you know, from kind of behind the scenes, I could, not just here, but like other places too, like I've been privy to some things that really make you shake your head. <coughs> but, uh, are you okay there? No, I'm okay. Some water. Some water. That wasn't me, by the way. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody's got different ideas, right? I mean, sometimes people want to try something so different and so zany that... You know, you're going a little too far off, and then, you know, when you get the guys that want to come in and think they're going to be like a Superman and <coughs> kick everybody's butt, it's like, dude, it doesn't work that way. And, you know, guys that want to come in and say, okay, well, I'm going to be like an, an MMA-style fighter, and I'm going to do this and this and this. It's like, well, no, if you're going to, if that's what you want, then go fight MMA. You know, we're entertainment, and it's, it's you know, unless that's, unless like a, like Brock Lesnar is obviously like a very unique situation, but for most people in the independent scene, it's like that it just doesn't doesn't wash. Like, you know, there's only so many guys around, you have to work <coughs> as a team, and if you, if you think you're just gonna you know plow up everybody, it doesn't happen. But you'd be surprised the number of guys that just wanna go through and be superman.